When you reach the peak of musical perfection, there's always someone out there who wants to drag you back down, and in some cases, bury you six feet under. Here are some musicians who were almost killed. Dana Martin was already serving two life sentences in 2012 when he sent several letters to Justin Bieber, and he even got a Bieber tattoo on his leg while in prison. Unsurprisingly, Bieber never responded to the freaky fan mail, which made Martin a tad angry. He was also upset that Bieber was turning into a bad boy, and it didn't help that Martin wanted his 15 minutes of fame. Determined to teach Bieber a lesson, Martin convinced his cellmate, Mark Stake, to castrate and kill the singer in exchange for $50,000, a Ferrari, and a farm once owned by Michael J. Fox. So when Stake was released from his New Mexico prison, he teamed up with his nephew, Tanner Ruane, and struck out for New York. But before they reached Bieber, Martin wanted his hitmen to castrate and kill the two witnesses who'd helped put him behind bars. Fortunately, the killers made a wrong turn along the way and ended up in Canada, where Stake was arrested for violating his parole. After officials found a sketch of Bieber and some hedge clippers in Stake's car, the whole plot fell apart pretty quickly. Martin eventually pled guilty to two counts of attempted murder. In 2000, while struggling to hit the big time, 50 Cent was sitting in a car outside his grandmother's house in Queens, New York, when an assassin walked up to the vehicle and unloaded his gun. Nine bullets tore into the rapper's body, slamming into his leg, hip, arm, right hand, chest, and the left side of his face. After emptying his clip, the gunman managed to escape. Many suspect the attacker was Daryl Baum, a man who worked as Mike Tyson's bodyguard, though he was never arrested. Before Baum could ever be brought to justice, he was shot down, possibly in retaliation for going after Fiddy. As for the rapper, it took six weeks before he could walk by himself and five months before he'd totally recovered. The attack also permanently altered his speech patterns as one gunshot destroyed his mouth. In fact, a fragment of a bullet is still lodged in his tongue. As the rapper explained to Vanity Fair, doctors didn't remove the bullet as it would have further damaged his nerves. But that injury has also given him a voice like no one else in hip-hop. In 1996, Jimmy Buffett released a song called Jamaica Mistaka, a bouncy little number about a guy who visits the tropical island and gets shot at by the police. Coming from the cheeseburger and paradise guy, this seems like a pretty unusual topic. But as it turns out, it was inspired by a real-life incident. Just a few months before releasing the song, Buffett was flying aboard an old World War II plane headed for Jamaica, hoping for a little rest and relaxation. Also on the plane were Chris Blackwell, the founder of Island Records, plus U2 lead singer Bono and Bono's wife and two young kids. Crazily enough, Jamaican authorities misidentified their craft as a drug smuggler's plane, so when it touched down, the cops opened fire. The trigger-happy gunman shot around 100 bullets, forcing Bono and his family to dive for cover. Fortunately, nobody was hurt in the chaos and the Jamaican authorities later apologized, but Bono didn't stick around long enough to hear anyone say they were sorry. When the gunfire stopped, the rocker and his family flew straight back to Florida, relieved to have escaped with their lives. You know, what was going through your mind when the Jamaican government shot at your plane? Mm. Uh, ducking. <laughs> ducking. <laughs> Headlined by the Rolling Stones, the Altamont Speedway Free Festival in 1969 featured some of the biggest bands of the 60s. Unfortunately, the concert wasn't exactly peaceful, as the Stones had hired the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club to provide security. According to some accounts, the biker gang was given $500 in free beer to whack concertgoers with pool cues. By the end of the night, four people were dead, including 18-year-old Meredith Hunter. After getting roughed up by the Angels, Hunter pulled a gun only to find himself on the wrong end of a biker's knife. Captured on film, the stabbing was the death knell for the free-loving 1960s, and on top of that, it almost got Mick Jagger killed. Furious about how things had gone down, Jagger refused to ever use the Hells Angels for security again. This didn't sit well with the biker gang, and according to ex-FBI agent Mark Young, they decided to get some satisfaction by killing the British rock star. Allegedly, they planned on sailing out to Jagger's Long Island home, avoiding security by sneaking up from the ocean and creeping into his backyard. Things didn't pan out according to their plans, though, as a storm capsized their boat, sending the angels into the sea. John Lennon wasn't the only Beatle who was faced with a truly dangerous fan. On December 30, 1999, George Harrison was confronted by a schizophrenic man named Michael Abram, who thought Harrison was a witch who had possessed Abram. Thinking God wanted him to kill Harrison, Abram invaded the musician's Oxfordshire mansion armed with a knife and a stone sword he'd broken off a statue in Harrison's garden. Fortunately, Harrison stepped out of his bedroom and saw Abram downstairs. 
Hoping to confuse the intruder, the singer began shouting, Harry Krishna, but the trick didn't work. Abram had his mind set on George, and he rushed up the stairs ready to kill the pop star. Harrison was able to tackle Abram, and as the two battled for the knife, Harrison's wife Olivia smashed Abram over the head with a brass poker. Soon, all three were on the ground in a desperate fight for life. During the scrum, Harrison was stabbed in the chest, and he later described how he could hear his lung deflate. As he lay wounded, Olivia Harrison began swinging a table lamp at Abram, fending him off long enough for the police to arrive. After his arrest, Abram spent a few months in a mental hospital before he was released in 2002. One evening in 1971, Elvis Presley found himself in a tricky situation involving a pistol-packing assassin named Alice Cooper. The shock rocker was hanging out with Liza Minnelli, Chubby Checker, and Linda Lovelace when they were all notified that Presley wanted to meet them. The group was ushered into the King's Vegas apartment. After a few pleasantries, Presley invited Cooper into his kitchen. And that's when Presley handed his new buddy a 38 caliber pistol. Wanting to show off his martial arts prowess, Presley ordered Cooper to point the gun straight at him. As the rocker trained the snub-nosed pistol at Presley, a little voice appeared in his head. The little devil here on my shoulder says, shoot him. Fortunately, the good angel on Cooper's other shoulder won the day. Moments later, Presley disarmed the rocker and put Cooper on the ground. As he removed his foot from Cooper's throat, he continued chatting like nothing strange had just happened. Of course, Cooper was pretty freaked out, describing the whole evening as weird. There's two things you need to know. Uh -huh. I'm the king, and number two is look out, man! In 1976, Jamaica was divided between two political parties, the Liberal People's National Party, or PNP, headed by Prime Minister Michael Manley, and the right-wing Jamaican Labour Party, or JLP, led by Edward Siaga. Fearing Manley was a communist, the United States government armed the JLP, which led to street battles between gangsters allied with both groups. The police also got involved, and soon hundreds of people were dead. At about this time, the PNP asked Bob Marley if he wanted to do a concert in Jamaica. They promised it wouldn't be a political event, but would rather be focused on uniting all of Jamaica. Marley agreed to perform, but immediately afterward, Manley moved the national elections to be held shortly after the concert, making it appear that Marley was endorsing Manley by performing so close to Election Day in a PNP event. The turn of events made someone incredibly angry, and on December 3, 1976, at least three gunmen stormed Marley's home. They opened fire with machine guns, hitting the singer in the arm and wounding his wife and manager. While the assassins escaped, everyone survived the attack. Two days later, Marley went on stage as scheduled. He performed for 90 minutes and even showed off his bandaged wounds. As one of the most famous pop stars of the 90s, Victoria Posh Spice Beckham has had plenty of glitz and glamour in her life. But she's also been the victim of multiple criminal schemes. For example, in January 2000, there was a plot to kidnap her and her 8-month-old son Brooklyn. Fortunately, the Beckhams were saved in the nick of time, although the crooks managed to escape as well. Just two years later, five more people were arrested for attempting to kidnap Beckham, although there's a bit of debate surrounding the story. As it turns out, the plot was exposed after the News of the World paid a hefty sum to a convicted crook who then ratted out the alleged kidnappers. Thanks to this revelation, the five people in custody were released. But perhaps the scariest incident occurred in March 2000. While rehearsing for a Spice Girls performance, Beckham was hustled to safety after a red dot suddenly appeared on her chest. Shortly afterward, a propped open door was discovered, and it was theorized that a sniper had been preparing to take a shot. In December 1971, Frank Zappa was performing at a Swiss casino when someone shot off a flare gun, burning the place to the ground, an event that inspired the Deep Purple song Smoke on the Water. Just a few days later, Zappa was playing at London's Rainbow Theater when a 24-year-old man named Trevor Charles Howell charged the musician and pushed him off the stage. Howell was upset because his girlfriend had a crush on Zappa. The rocker took a 15-foot dive into a concrete orchestra pit, a fall that fractured his ankle and leg, broke a rib, paralyzed an arm, pulverized his larynx, and put a hole in his head. Luckily, Zappa survived, but he was stuck in a wheelchair for nearly a year. When he finally got out, one of his legs was shorter than the other, resulting in chronic back pain. The smashed-up larynx possibly affected Zappa's singing voice, making it much deeper. The whole incident encouraged him to keep a bodyguard by his side at all times. In the 90s, a pest control worker named Ricardo Lopez was obsessed with Icelandic musician Björk. He created art in her honor and detailed in his diary about how he wanted to become her best friend. He also wrote down his thoughts about killing himself and others. 
No deranged fantasy lasts forever, and in 1996, the 21-year-old Lopez was shocked to learn that Bjork was in a relationship with the English musician Goldie. Lopez was incensed that his beloved singer was dating, so he then began working on a plan to punish her. The plan was to mail a bomb from his Florida home to Bjork's London residence. On September 12, 1996, Lopez put his explosive package in the mail. Then, after painting his face with red, green, and black paint, he shot himself on camera as Bjork music played in the background. Authorities found his body days later, and the bomb was stopped before it arrived at Bjork's doorstep. If you or anyone you know is having suicidal thoughts, please call or chat online with the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK.